Right. Hi, everybody. Seven minutes late starting our AMA on the Singularity Net 2021 financials. And we've also got some more news that we're going to share with you as well. We, we broaden it out and, and share a little few updates from the different spin-offs from our technology projects as they relate to the questions you've been sending in. So hi, hi everyone. Wait, saying hi to me. Please say hi to me in the in the chat channel. Um, nice to see you all. And I'm also really keen to know who's here because I've been really enjoying chatting with you all on the community telegram chat some really fantastic questions coming in uh, for the ama thanks very much people to say big thanks to i think our burnt toast kieran is that an irish name kieran if you're here you'd have to tell me uh, it certainly looks irish to me um we've got questions from alucard sent in some great questions thank you owner and i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing that correctly so forgive me if i'm not um six sigma we've got uh, dr emmerich and um a few others have have sent in some questions so i think i've got somewhere in the region of about 60 65 questions to go through so we'll do a little bit of a canter through them and hopefully uh, be able to able to answer everything that you're uh, that you're asking hi six sigma Hi, Anne. Hi, Fred. Uh, hi from Atlanta. Hi from Australia. Hi, Jack. Hi, Vortex. Hi, Rohit. Hi, Justin. Um, great to have you all here. Thanks so much for joining. And thank you very much for your loyal and faithful follower, followership of our amazing Singularity Net project. Ben is on his way. If anyone's wondering if you've just got me, Ben is on his way. Um, and I know you all also wanted to see our amazing CFO, Mario. He is taking a very, very well earned holiday this week with his family and uh, he sends his regards to you all. He says he will be back from holidays in a couple of weeks. He's very happy to have another AMA and come and engage. Um, so I've got a couple of questions actually about uh, about Mario, which I'll be answering in our as we go through the questions. So Ben will be here any minute. We've categorized the questions. I'll give you a little bit of a kind of clue. Hi, Ian. I'll give you a hi. Shall I say hi, hi to Pava from Australia? Hi, hi, uh, hi everyone. And um, so the questions, the categories we've got, we've got questions about categories on spin-off fundraising. We have a few questions around the detail, the level of detail that the financial report went into, questions about governance and transparency. We've got questions on platform traction, adoption, utilization and uh, AI, uh, AI agents on the platform. We've got questions about our business model and our revenue model. We've got a few, not very many questions on our trading, uh, trading processes, trading uh, and treasury, generally speaking. And then we've got some general update questions, um, uh, which, which we'll go through. And then we've got some just kind of, I think, for clarity. And um, so before Ben gets here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with a uh, question from two questions from Dr. Emmerich. Hi, Dr. Emmerich. I hope you're watching. I'd love to know what kind of doctor you are. Uh, thanks for your followership of, of the program. I'm going to start with the salary questions before Ben gets here. Uh, so one of the questions uh, is, and I frequently see this on the channel, what's Ben's salary? So the big reveal here today is that I'm actually not going to tell you what Ben's salary is, but I am going to tell you that we have benchmarked Ben's salary. And against benchmark, and this is why I'm glad he's not here, because we don't necessarily need him to know this, but against benchmark, Ben's salary is approximately 25% below median for a similar CEO of a similar tech company. And um, that's something which it doesn't surprise me. And generally, generally speaking, I'd say at SingularityNet, most people work here for the passion and for the community and for the, the the joy of working with such incredible technologists and advanced tech. Um, certainly compared to, and that's just compared to CEO of tech startups, compared to head of AI at Google or Microsoft, he would be uh, dramatically underpaid. So hopefully that will answer that one question. If 
if really required, I can go to a recruitment agency and get a statement to this to this effect. But Ben is definitely not overpaid. He is below average. And someone also asked how much Mario gets paid. Uh, Mario is also below average for a CFO with his skill set, investment banking background, cryptocurrencies, and uh, the level of accountability and responsibility which he holds here at Singularity Net. So uh, that's that one put to bed. Both CEO and CFO. Oh, we've benchmarked them. Our head of HR have been seeing, I've been looking at the data today for you, have confirmed uh, below, below benchmark. They're definitely not highly paid. Um, Dr. Emmerich, I also said I was looking forward to answering your question about uh, should we vote who would hold the CEO position? And again, this is maybe a nice one to uh, answer before Ben gets here. And and. The, the, the point here, hi David, nice to see you, thanks for joining, uh, hi Fabiano. Um, so, so when you say could we vote in a different CEO, I don't really know whether you'd be thinking about actually Ben actually leaving Singularity Net, but the thing about it is if Ben left Singularity Net, then all of the top talent would also leave Singularity Net. We're here because he's in my opinion, and I don't have data to benchmark this against, but in my opinion, uh, the world's leading technology and uh, visionary on the planet today, and I'd work for him for free if I had to, uh, because he's extraordinary. And it's, I've had maybe seven amazing bosses, I was counting them up in my, in my banking days. And, you know, Ben is like all oh, seven of them all put together times 10 in brilliance. Um, so, yeah, if you voted in a different CEO and voted Ben out, then I'm pretty sure that the majority of the leadership team and the really, really fantastic technologists would follow. So it wouldn't be a good idea. Now, just in case anyone's thinking, oh, what's the risk here? Is the whole company dependent on Ben? Well, if he did get knocked down by a bus, I'm pretty confident that, uh, you know, our extraordinary leadership and Alexei and Sergey and Matt and uh, Ibi and Mario and myself would finish the job because we are all extremely committed to a benevolent, beneficial singularity, to developing artificial general intelligence, to positive impact on humanity, and to really transforming what it means to be human on our planet. Um, hi, Waring. Thanks for saying hi and thanks for joining. Uh, so that's those couple of kind of uh, more personal questions, I think, out of the way. I guess it's fair to say at some point, I'm pretty sure Ben would like to actually focus more on pure science and pure technology and maybe that could be possible at some time uh, but right now he's he's our extraordinary leader and we all love him and he does an incredible and an amazing job and we're making extraordinary progress across all of our technology initiatives um, across the board getting ready for really really major exponential growth and transformation Right, so now I'm going to run through the questions from the top. I'm starting with spin-off uh, project fundraising questions. There were a number of questions which came through, and I think it was just, you know, um, it was a very long, detailed, dense financial report to anybody who read the detailed one. And as you can imagine, we poured for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and, hours and days and weeks over it. Um, and um, there was a lot of detail in there. So I'm, I'm going to, so some of the answers are merely explaining what was actually in the report. Uh, Kieran, uh, and I don't know, Kieran hasn't answered here if that's an Irish name. Um, Matt Faraday, you'd have to ask that question to Ben. Uh, who knows? But so long as he stays, you know, so he 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 does need he does need to be here. He's he's the visionary going. Uh, he's the visionary for us. So just uh, jumping into that, uh, Kieran hasn't answered whether that's an Irish name. I'm pretty sure it is. All right. Does anybody know what's being referred to here? Singularity Dow, Newnet, and Sophia Dow spin-offs raise over ten million dollars. Is that a VC investment or token sales by the team? Uh, answer: This includes seed funding, VC investment, and token sales for Newnet and um, Singularity Dow and Sophia Dow. The details are all in the documents there. So. Uh, SDAO and NTX both span off and they raised around five and a half million dollars each uh, across the three types of funding. So seed, VC and uh, token funding. And then Sophia Dow raised 1.5 million in private funding to launch uh, Sophia Dow and Sophia First. And they're doing some uh, really exciting work there. There'll be future NFT drops and there will be a, a token sale coming up uh, for Sophia Dow. 
Singularity Net has a major equity stake in Sophia Dow, Sophia Verse, and you'll remember those of you who very kindly supported us with the phase two uh, proposal, that 2.5% of, of the um, tokens are actually dedicated to Sophia Dow, Sophia Verse. Uh, Fabiano has asked me something in, I think, uh, maybe, I think Spanish. So if we've got any Spanish readers would like to translate that for me, that would be super. Uh, we must have someone here who can do that for me. Eamon, hi, lovely to see you. Thank you very much indeed. We don't currently plan to do audited financial statements. Um, it's not required for a company our size. And, and as we understand, it's not really the norm for a company our size. However, as we progress through time and as we progressively decentralize, we're, we're in the process, and I'll come, come on to this later, but we're in the process of decentralizing leadership decision making from the core executive to the broader executive to our ecosystem leadership group, which is a group of about 35 and out to the wider community. And we are committed to radical transparency and progressive radical transparency. So as we progress on this path, we do plan to provide more and more and more financial transparency because at the end of the day, we are a decentralized organization. You and me are one. Uh, we're all working together towards this, this incredible mission. So that's the answer to that one. And um, I'm gonna go back to the questions. Hi, Ben. Hey, hey, good morning. Good morning, good afternoon. How are you? We've I've got started. I've covered yeah, the yeah, question. Yeah. I've, 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 the... I've been uh, I've been I've been watching uh on my on my phone uh, from the car as i drove into the office my connection at home flaked out so i i came into the office to to continue but yeah just uh keep on going and i will uh chime in as useful all right thanks very much uh, i've covered the questions of uh will we ever vote in a different ceo and i've also covered uh the questions of yours and mario sorry and you're now on mute possibly Oh, no, no, you're just delayed. Sorry. Uh, and we're now I'm running through the questions from the top of the Q&A sheet. I've told everyone what the categories are. So I'm actually on the first row, which is row three, the uh, funding. And then there are some questions coming in on YouTube and I'm, I'm jumping out to those. As yeah, they yeah come I in. see those. So, yeah. um, so I've just finished. Uh, so now on the next one project, who is funding the spin offs? This is from Burn Toast, uh, such a great name. And especially your touch. Uh, it's it, it's uh, very nice. And a, a fellow farmer. Um, I'm from a farming background. Um, so I hope you're here. Are you here, Burn Toast? Will you say hi? Um, anyway, I hope you're here. Uh, so if not, of course, you can watch the, watch the replay when we publish it. So who's funding them? Singularity Dow and UNET are self-funded. Sophia Dow raised one and a half million in private investment and is being funded to the tune of 2.5% of ADIX ADA tokens minted per month as outlined in the phase two plan. Um, and all, if you take a look in note 14 in the detailed financial report, you'll see all of the details as to how much funding went to the spin-offs throughout uh, through the last three or four years. Uh, so that's all very clear there. Um, so now the next, anything, unless you want to say anything about funding spin-offs, Ben, I, I think uh, you whizzed I, I through mean, some of these details. I mean, the, yeah, I mean, the. Financial question you you've answered accurately and the, and the details were were reported. I mean I, I think uh, conceptually, I think the situation with Nunet and Sing Dao illustrates the uh, value and purpose of the strategy. But in in the early stages, I mean Nunet and Sing Dao, we incubated them within Singularity Net Foundation. We spun them off. They raised capital in a way that was appropriate to their, their own business models, which will be different for, for, for different spin-offs. Some may raise equity, some, some may sell tokens, some, some may not need to raise capital, we'll just get customers. And with Nunet and Singdao, what, what we also see is they're, they're building their products and, and their platforms, and Singdao is getting a significant user base Neither of them has yet been a dramatic user of AGIX token, but they 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 both are definitely going to be. And what, what we're seeing in the cases of, of these two projects is when you launch a new 
product addressing a certain vertical market's needs, there's a bunch of work to be done to build that product into something, you know, basically functional that meets the needs of that of that vertical. And so there's a bit of time before you add in the the AI wizardry that then then takes the product to the to the next level. And Nunet and Singdao are going through through that that arc. Now with with some like Rajuv is using is using singularity net AI already on, on, on the Rajuv app. So the moment it's spun out, it will I mean as as, as soon as they launch the the product at, at, at large scale after the beta, it's all it's already using AGIX token and, and using using singularity net. But I, I think that anyway, Nunet and Singdao illustrate many aspects of this strategy, which we're then going to be repeating multiple times during the coming month and, and the coming year, spinning out the, the current crop of spinoffs one by one. So I think that, yeah, the fairly modest cash and token expenditure on incubating the spinoffs is going to pay off in, in, incredibly, bo both in things like the foundation's founders token shares and tokenomics spinoffs and and interaction on the platform that that is is derived from the the spinoffs rolling out their products and 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 getting market traction. That covers uh, spinoff spending. So we've got uh, ten questions on financial detail, and what I suggest I do is I'll just horse through these because a lot of them are are fairly straightforward answers. Yeah. Uh, so I'll just 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 counter through them. Right. So first one from Kieran. Hi. Um, you're asking uh, accelerated growth in SDAO and NTX and their token contributions will strengthen operations operations funding. This was a statement in the blog post, the covering management discussion and analysis. Um, the answer is, uh, as per the blog, to blog post, Singularity Net receives monthly STAO token allocations, which contributed significantly to the foundation's funding in 2021. Uh, new Net's NTX utility tokens are not as liquid, but we're expecting a similar contribution in 2022 and 2023. Singdao contributed over 2.5 million USD to SNET balance sheet in 2021 and UNET 495, uh, 495k. So as these two spin-offs continue to grow and um, accelerate their growth, clearly their contribution will also support the operations and the funding of Singularity Net in three ways. Firstly, by introducing AI agents onto the marketplace. Secondly, through monthly token contribution. And thirdly, they also both contribute some fiat income for services. So we act as a kind of center of excellence for services like HR or compliance that a startup doesn't necessarily want to hire somebody for, and, and uh, but we do charge them when they use our Singularity Net services. So that's what that means. Uh, next one from Burnt Toast, is there going to be a detailed expense re report to this financial review? That's not currently something that we're planning to do. This, this report does contain the full level of expense detail that we're going to share at this time. It's pretty much in line with what we see in both traditional and crypto businesses. But we are happy to take uh, feedback and suggestions on board. And I think I've asked you on Telegram, you know, send us some examples of what you think works really well for other organizations and, and what, what, what you think is um, like, like benchmark top quality transparency. And then we will. A aspire to 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 meet it and beat it uh, in our next set of financial reports. Um, next one is from Sly. Hi, Sly. Hope you're with us. Curious what Amplify is up to and the non-reoccurring salary of 600k. Um, so the non-reoccurring salary wasn't really to Amplify. That was the entire. If you take a look at the accounts, that was the entire amount funded to spin-offs in. 2021. Um, but due to sensitivity and NDA issues, we're not talking too much. I think uh, Amplify and Studio are up to some very exciting work at the moment, but they've suggested they'll give the community an update towards the end of the year. But they do provide a lot of commercial opportunities into Singularity Net. They bring revenue, uh, potential revenue opportunities, and they provide us with a fair degree of uh, consulting on fundraising and um, a number of exciting projects, including our twin protocol. Don't know if you want to add anything there to Amplifier Studio, Ben. 
No, I, I'm, no? I mean, okay. I, I think I think that's that, that's that's fair. Yeah, that's uh, that's been yeah. progressing. Uh, I guess less ambitiously than we envisioned in 2018, 19, when we started out. I'd say a lot of the activity we had at one point thought would happen through studio as a venue. We've just done through an assemblage of different vertical market specific spin-offs instead of sort of centralizing it in 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 studio, but the pivot from studio in, into Amplify under Bill Inman's leadership, I think, is sort of finding a new purpose and, 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 and direction for studio, which will be an interesting thing for Bill to talk to the community about at some point, but it's not really too financially material in terms of the financial report, which is our focus now. Fabulous. Thank you. I'm just going to duck out to a couple of the YouTube questions because I think it's it's more fun to take them on the fly. Eamon, you're asked, can we vote on partnerships as well, like we do on deep funding? I think that's a good idea. Um, we probably wouldn't do it immediately because we have a number of partnerships which are in advanced stages of discussion. And what we would do if if we adopt that as a protocol, we tell partners at early, you know, immediately when we start talking to them that there will be a community vote so they know. But I think it's a great suggestion. Let me let us take that one back to our leadership team, discuss it, and perhaps implement it in. 2023 when we start with a brand new fresh or whenever we start with it with a fresh pipeline so great 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 suggestion thank you um that took that took our jobs thank you for your beautiful comments it's really nice for you to say that um and flunky flunk uh neti ethiopia um, it's unquestionable that we need AI. How do we go about it? I think we're going to answer that uh, as we go through all of the all of the updates on the platform. Um, unless Ben, you want to jump in and tell Flunky Flunk how do we go about uh, implementing AI in a nutshell? Um, that's a big topic. So I, I guess we we should get through the financial report. Let's get through the financial report before, like, I, that's right. before I start rambling about that, which is much yeah. more interesting. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. We'll let let, let 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 me run back through the financial detail request, and then I'll come back to that. See, nice question coming in from Six Sigma. What about Deep? Is there a funding report for that? Deep was launched in 2022, so it wasn't part of the 2021 financials. However, it will be included in the 2021 in, in the 2022 financials. But our lovely Jan Horlings, who's running Deep funding, he has actually produced some data uh, on what was awarded a, a, a funding report. And he's happy to share that with you shortly. So, so that'll be coming out soon. Thank you for that question. Burnt Toast, again, both to Burnt Toast. Will there be a detailed financial analysis? Uh, the details have been provided and published. There is an extra link in the blog, which is, you know, which provides the full full report. So um, we consider that to be a, a, you know, industry standard level of detail. But again, show us something better and we'll see if we can aspire to it. Uh, again, a couple more from Burnt Toast. Seems strange for a decentralized project not to provide any transaction information to look at. We'd really like to again see examples of these because our perspective from what we've looked at in the benchmark is that even for a decentralized ecosystem, it's not customary to share all of the transactions performed by companies in the ecosystem, just like it's not customary to share each and every single bank payment. And um, in the context of decentralization governance, actions and transactions such as deep funding will be fully outlined and explained. Yeah, so I mean, in this, this gets into some bigger issues, which are perhaps more pertinent to the financial report than how to build how to build AGI. But I mean, the movement toward progressive decentralization is quite important to me. And indeed, it's not gone as fast as I'd envisioned in 2017 when, when we started the project. But I, I think there's a lot of examples in the crypto world demonstrating that, you know, focusing on fully decentralizing and democratizing governance before there's a whole bunch of product traction has been a mistake over 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 and over again and that that's that's for a number of reasons but part of it is that before there's a lot of traction and sufficient amount of of usage of of, of the network you end up having a community that 
is heavily populated with uh, speculators, right? And and this this makes governance a little different than governance is after your community primarily consists of people who are really heavily using the product. I mean, we do have some utilization of the platform now, which is which is great, but I, I don't think the utilization is up to the level where users of the platform would be the dominant voice in decentralized governance, which is really what you want for the decentralized governance to get going in, in, in the healthiest way. I think partly through the spinoffs launching products, the drive token utilization, we're going to get there fairly soon. And as utilization grows, you know, synced in with that, we want to fully, more, more and more fully decentralized governance. But honestly, even after that happens, that's still not that likely to take the take the effect of like each time some contractor is paid with a token transaction, us reporting like this guy was paid this exact amount for doing this amount of coding to to the to the community or or, or something. I mean, I mean that's just uh, that's not an ordinary level of reporting for an, an organization and would. Would also, given that there are speculative markets, it, it, it would give sort of fodder for speculators to use to to do various financial trading games ba based on the reporting being being given. Even so, there, there's there's a lot of reasons why that wouldn't make sense. I think I think the the purpose of giving the financial report here is just as it is in 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 the, the rest of the business world, right? To make the various stakeholders, which includes the token holders, to make them in the loop and to make them comfortable with what, what sorts of things the, 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 pro the project is, is, is doing. And I think the level of detail provided is adequate for that, just as it is with other crypto projects and other, other mainstream companies. I mean, what you would have with a more fully decentralized ecosystem is more smaller entities instead of the foundation which is doing so much now and we're doing a lot of, of good stuff so that's it's not a problem but with the, instead of just the foundation doing such a high percentage of everything you'd have a bunch of smaller entities also contributing majorly to the to the ecosystem and then i mean then on the financial level each of those would do its own financial reporting and, and you, you would have a different view but I don't think you'll find many of those entities is going to report their every bank transaction or every every wallet transaction, just as I mean nobody else does either. So similar similar question. I'd like to know. I think it's the last one in 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 this set of yours, Brent Toast. How often or when exactly with timestamps the foundation bought and sold tokens? Um, we we, we uh, I think Ben's Ben's just touched on this. We we wouldn't share this. It would be it would be too detailed. And um, yeah, I, I, yeah. Even listed companies don't provide this level of detail. Uh, next one is from Crypto AI News, and and it was what was the marketing? And we think it, the question was what was the marketing budget spent on? And the answer is contractors, some of our amazing team. Uh, PR and social media agencies, events, influencers, and uh, a little bit of advertising. Uh, Crypto AI News asked how much ETH is being held right now. And we're going to give you the ETH balance from the financial statement because that's the uh, that's the report that we're discussing today. And the ETH balance as of the financial statement is $1.5 million worth. And how much Bitcoin being held uh, as of the financial statement is 560000 K worth of Bitcoin. So that's the uh, financial transactions and details uh, section finished. We're now moving into governance and transparency. Uh, so, Bern Toast asks, where is governance in the future of SNET? Um, and I think I'll let you take this one, Ben, because you're so passionate about decentralization. Yeah, I mean, my long term vision here, or let me say medium term vision, I don't want to make it feel that far off, is well, I, I, I would like to see the Singularity Net ecosystem primarily 
governed in a in a Tao like fashion. Now, the foundation as an entity has its own legal governments. I mean, it's a Dutch nonprofit organization. That there's a board and 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 bylaws and so forth. So there's that level that has to be thought about and 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 take and taken care of. But conceptually, setting aside the the legal machinations, one would like the community through democratic decision making mechanisms to guide what's done, not at the level of every single task assigned to a developer, every single transaction, but in terms of which which projects are are are, are pursued. So say a decision like, okay, we're porting from Ethereum to Cardano, we're porting from Cardano to Hypercycle Cardano sidechain. We're 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 gonna launch a you know a prototype metaverse running on singularity net platform this decisions like that you would like to see made ultimately by democratic decision making across the whole community and to get there we need to really improve the state of governance in DAOs quite considerably and to be frank this is something i wish we'd paid more attention to than we have so far, I've certainly thought about it. We've discussed about it a lot. It's just we've been focusing on on building building great decentralized AI, AI software and haven't put as much energy into that as I hope we would. But on, on the other hand, there's a point I made a few minutes ago that even with the best mechanisms, unless your community is engaged with the right source of activities, which is means a lot higher percentage of the community i think has to be people who are intensively utilizing the platform to get ai, AI done and we have that now but we need more and more and the, the, the more that boosts i think the more healthy a decentralized governance framework can can be i mean you the thing is right now most decentralized governance is basically one dollar one vote and this just leads to oligarchy of token whales which is probably not better than what we have now, which which is sort of benevolent shepherding of the ecosystem by me and my colleagues in, 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 the, in, the, in the foundation. On the other hand, going to one human, one vote, obviously has a lot of other problems. There's KYC issues in terms of validating who's a valid human, but, but also, you know, it's not necessarily correct that a person who bought one token and has been involved for one day with the ecosystem should have the same say as a token well or a longtime AI developer or, or product user, right? So clearly there's some subtlety to how governance should work. Amount of token holding should have some say in the amount of influence you have. We need a reputation system that takes into account how long you've been involved with the ecosystem and how how much you've been doing in the ecosystem and how much you've been vouched for by, by others, others in the ecosystem. And you have a mix of per person voting, a mix of token holding based voting and, 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 and then in the mix reputation based voting and how to get this mix to work correctly for governance of a decentralized ecosystem is, is a new thing. Definitely, we're going to be way better off if we've rolled out this fully decentralized governance before we create the AGI that launches the singularity, right? Like we don't, we don't want to have any single points of failure or any 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 single points of vulnerability for you know terrorists or government activity or, or whatever it is, right? You want a fully decentralized, you want a fully decentralized ecosystem. So we we know we know we need to get there. And um, actually, the Mindplex. Among our current crop of spinoffs, Mindplex will be a bit after launch, prototyping a version of the same reputation system math that we want to use for this decentralized governance that, that, that I'm discussing. So, I mean, we're we're working toward that, and there you'll have the Mindplex user community as not only the users of the Mindplex reputation system, but as sort of Get guinea pigs for tuning this kind of reputation system on data from real, real communities, and I'm hoping to get other decentralized social media projects to running on SingularityNet platform 
and leveraging our reputation system, both because social media needs to be decentralized and because this gives us a training ground and a learning area for for reputation systems, which are going to be key for, for decentralized governance. So I, I think I think we very much need to go in that direction. I've been thinking of in the next six months doing a couple workshops on decentralized governance in 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 particular to try to crystallize the communities th thinking about this but uh, i mean this really is part of the overall process of of growing the the network in itself it's not a cure all right it has to come along with the maturation of the community in a in a in a bunch of, of otherwise and with the maturation of the governance technology itself. Thank you very much, Ben. It's such an, an inspiring vision to be part of. And so I'll whiz through the, the rest of them and think a little more transactional. That, that was kind of the high level covering uh, yeah. note. Uh, Burnt Toast asks, where's the supervisory council or group or ethics review or suggestion board? Uh, the financial report was presented to the supervisory council in advance of sharing with the community and the supervisory council is supportive of what is being presented. Uh, what happened to the Supervisory Council asked Alucard, well, they are here, they collaborate closely with us. We're working, they're working, uh, they're, they're leading some of the re research project that we're doing into other decentralized organizations, which is due to publish in September, and uh, we meet with them on a regular basis. They have, they, they, they also assigned one fifth of their wallet, their phase two token wallet to the community ambassador program run by our community manager and and in respect of ethics we've held a number of ai ethics workshops this year and we will be continuing to drive towards ensuring that we have the right level of ethics governance and oversight in singularity net as we move forward into the future and if you'd like to be involved in that burnt toast i'll be taking a lead in that into 2023 and uh, would love your love your uh, love your input on it. Uh, we've got transparency again. Uh, same answer as before, burnt toast, which is uh, you're saying it's missing OTC transaction, private investor transaction, employee salaries, onboarding uh, firings, exchange transactions, um, partnership agreements and IDs. The level of transparency, we're, we're comfortable with the level of transparency for this year, but we will continue to progressively get more transparent. And again, uh, you're asking, uh, the the community has been trying to solve the mystery of who's been dumping for a long time. Um, this is this is not something that Singularity Net is is in a position to 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 answer. Um, into governance, Singularity Net missed many opportunities to involve the community in governance votes for all of these steps, from building a benevolent AGI to many spin-offs that don't make use of AGIX to Hypercycle, which removes the AI agent. Uh, a agent layers from AGIX. So we are on a decentralization path. We've established the community ambassador program that attracts much more of the current community's input. And uh, it's proven very popular. Please do come and get involved. And, and via the ambassador program, it does, does give us an opportunity. It does give you all an opportunity to have more say in more of our decisions. But as Ben has just outlined, we will progressively decentralize more and more of these, these decisions as we go forward. Um, are there any ways, next one is from owner, and I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. So if anybody knows better, tell me how, please. Uh, apologies. Uh, are there any possibilities for the community to exert influence on the way the project is run, planned, governed? Um, now that the financial report has been released and assets getting all the uh, feedback. We are building a network of decentralized and uh, beneficial AI services and our vision is backed by 30% of the currently issued tokens which have been allocated so the, so the community can get funded through the deep funding program. So the deep funding program has just concluded its first round of, of funding and less than two months ago with an allocated budget of $1 million in AGIX tokens despite the bear market. So the entire community has had the chance to vote and will always be 
always be invited to vote on which projects get funded. So that's one mechanism to exert influence. And as I've just said, the community ambassador program is another as well. So uh, come and get involved and uh, we will progressively uh, move more and more decisions to you. I'm just going to go and see Ben, look, you look like you were going to say something. I'm just going to finish the last two. Um, so you asked, uh, Six Sigma asked, where's Mario and why does he never make an appearance to address community queries? Uh, I was told he's stupidly busy and uh, he's never available for community engagement. Um, six, six. Uh, what we'd really like to say is that it is true that uh, Mario is, uh, is extremely busy. He is a highly valued strategic thinker in our executive team. This report was scheduled for release under Dutch regulations, just at a time when he was going on two weeks holiday. But he is happy to come along and commute, participate in the community AMA in the future. And without making any personal comments at all whatsoever about Mario, what I would say is in my two stints in finance functions in uh, one insurance company and one investment bank, um, I, I find that people who are brilliant at numbers are, aren't always um, don't always want to come and chat about it all the time. That, and my husband's in finance as well, uh, and he's like that. Uh, but not saying that's that about, about Mario at all. How much is foundation paying the CFO we've already covered? So that's round. Uh, so that's it on transparency and financial details. And we're now moving into a, a section where we've gathered a few of your questions on platform traction, adoption, and utilization. Um, we've got a big ton of questions here. Ben, is there anything you want to say at the outset before I start um, rattling through the questions? No, let's, and, let's, let's, just, let's just roll through it. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. rattle. Yeah. yeah, so Alucard uh, is saying, when I read the financial report, and thank you, Alucard, for your messages. When I re read the financial report, what I see is the whole asset ecosystem working like a research department that leverages token sales to retail investors to fund the research with zero commercial strategies. This is highly unsustainable as it destroys any token utility. Well, we think the deep funding program is an awesome example of proper token utilization with the purpose of funding the development of new AI modules that will be published on the Singularity Net marketplace with the purpose of being interconnected while making use of the ecosystems tokens for inter-process communications. And I'm, I'm going to cover uh, utilization more broadly and across the spin-offs uh, in response to another question down the line. So, so I think yeah, that's yeah. that. I, I, I mean, I, I would say the foundation has been doing awful lot of software development, which is not really what you'd call research. So that's, that's pretty, that perception uh, reflected in that comment is not accurate. I mean, we do have, we do have some research going on. Certainly we're doing research on how to make AGI in the open cog hyperon project. We're doing research on, human longevity by analyzing data sets and the Rejuve spinoff. We're doing research on governance systems, as I noted uh, a little while ago, but we've got quite a lot of software development of underlying platform and, and of, of tool, tools running, running on, on, on the platform. It's true, SingularityNet is creating a platform and then some sort of basic tools and demonstrations leveraging that platform. It's not developing end user products in a really serious way. I mean, the platform is something more that developers use to build stuff on. And then the stuff that developers build is what, is what reaches, reaches customers, right? So the, the Rejuve app, which Janet will mention in, in a minute in response to another question, I think, but I mean, that, that's an example that reaches end users who are use, using the app and are interested in, in, in their own longevity. And that, that that leverages research that we did on probabilistic modeling of aging and, and, and longevity, but it's a product reaching users that, that leverages research. And on Singularity DAO, for example, you know, we just a couple of weeks ago got some really cool results from our Transformer Neural Net team on crypto price prediction on various timescales using transformer neural nets. We have similar interesting results, but complementary using agent-based systems. So 
again, this is research, right? This is research in, in crypto market prediction. But then this, this research will be rolled out as things progress on the back end of Singdao's data sets, which will then be accessing these models run, running on the platform, right? So, I mean, I think there's research, there's development, and there's product. And certainly we're doing all of those, although we've made the choice to put more of the product into spinoffs rather than retaining it in the base organization, which is really because we realized the, the like the obvious thing that success with a product isn't just about building the software and putting it out there. Like you, you need marketing aimed at that product. You need user interface people aimed at that product. You, you really need a whole group focused on that vertical market and that product area. And that's uh, very elegantly done by having a spin-off entity that, that is, is just shepherding that product along. Thank you very much for that uh, brilliant perspective then. Right, next one is from Bert Toast. Uh, how much AI research and development is going to private companies like Singularity Studio Amplify? That could have been used towards a functional marketplace. The answer is none. Um, Awakening Health is the only funded AI research and development funded project outside of the spin-offs as listed in the financial report and um, and that's funded separately as well so the answer to that is is pretty much none and um, how much is being spent on spin-offs 2020 report showed 10k to new net pico and who is funding the spin-offs um brentos please and i think i said this i did say this to you on telegram if you have a look at detailed the detailed presentation note 14 it breaks down all of the funding over the years to all of the spin-offs but it was 604 913 k in 2021 and it is being funded that 604 k is being funded by singularity net foundation and as per the phase two proposal to seed massive utilization on the platform in strategically selected vertical markets. Um, next one, full year AI research and development costs for ESNA Foundation were 1.3 million. How much of the research yielded a product? I think Ben's just really touched upon an answer to this, but much of it included a contribution to the development of the Singularity Net and Great Dialogue system, which is a product that can be commercialized. Progress towards our core goals of AGI via OpenCog and Hyperon has been strong, which can be commercialized via and will be commercialized via true AGI and will be a very, very strong product and, and also underpin and uh, power all of our other applications and spin-offs and, and vertical markets and, and deep funding and, and, and everything. Um, other AI deliverables in 2021 include generative models for lyrics for Jam Galaxy, which will be added to the SNET marketplace and productized, as well as development of our twin protocol technologies, which uh, is a, a project that we are running at Singularity Net along with Studio slash Amplify and uh, has got huge commercial applicability and we're seeing a lot of corporate interest in that uh, trend protocol. So I, I think, you know, for 1.3 million, I came from I came from a corporate technology background, whereas for 1.3 million, all you got was like the IT team to more or less write you a plan uh, as to what you were going to do. Uh, for, for me, I, I think the level of output for such a small you know, by comparison to what a large technology company uh, would spend, I think has been outstanding. And I would say I was speaking recently with the CTO of a major um, technology company, and we were talking about Grace. And he he said, "How much did you spend on 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 Grace AI and Grace R and D?" And I said, "Guess." And he said, "A hundred million dollars." Um, and, you know, uh, obviously we haven't spent anything nearly like hundreds and, and uh, hundred million dollars. 1.5 million is, is what Awakening Health has contributed so far to AI development of Grace. So coming from real world technology, not real world, but, but corporate uh, corporate technology de de deliver development, um, the output levels from Singularity Net, I would say, are at least 10x anything I've seen in my technology career to date. So huge amount, huge, huge amount of value and uh, product worthy output for that 
billion dollars. Right, um, which, which is not to say it wasn't obviously uh, very well appreciated and very, very carefully spent at the same time. Platform traction frustration. What is our plan to kickstart demand for our tokens outside of uh, marketing and airdrops? Thank you, Alec Hart, for another question. So a little bit of a long answer here, but it, I, I'm going to share three different perspectives on ways that we're driving traction on the platform. Uh, one is the content. We currently have 52 different AI agents present, and during this year, we're planning to either update or introduce new AI, AI agents, 30 in total between now and the end of the year, with 10 being an update of existing agents and, and 20 completely new, new agents coming onto the platform. We're also following other open source AI platforms that are interested in putting AI agents onto our platform. So we're having some partnership discussions to introduce uh, other AI agents and, and other providers onto our platform. Uh, so second perspective is around the AI developer perspective. We've been doing a lot of work, our, our uh, platform team in Bangalore have been doing some, some fantastic work on improving the platform from an AI developer point of view, making it more user-friendly, making it more user-friendly uh, uh, user interface, faster AP, API calls, smoother onboarding of AI services. And we think that these improvements are going to enable us to attract mm. a wider community of developers to put their AI services onto the platform, further increasing the demand. And then finally, as as, as we've alluded to previously and, and per the, the uh, phase two proposal, which you all supported, is our spin-offs and use of our projects. So Rejuve, has got a amazing app, which is being very, very well received, a uh, longevity app, which is in closed beta testing at the moment uh, for both Google and Apple. And it will be launched, uh, fully launched this year. It will use services on the platform, which will which will boost utilization, obviously, uh, by providing AI services. And its goal is to attract the big scientific community engaged in the study of new drugs and longevity as a whole. And we're expecting uh, usage of of AI to reduce up to be quite substantial. NewNet, of course, will be competing with centralized corporate services like AWS and integrated with our AI platform, which will further expand use of the platform. And after the implementation, the ecosystem will be providing not only the AI services, but also a decentralized hardware for computing them, uh, greatly reducing the entry level requirements for AI developers and making our platform a one stop shop for all AI developers with increased use, of course, of the AGIX uh, token and platform services. And then we've got Mindplex coming along with our recommendation engine and a virtual chatbot AI and article reader AI, automatic tweet summary generation AI and other AI services that will be built and have been built. There are a number of AI modules have been completed for Mindplex and we're going to see a um, launch of the Mindplex magazine within two weeks uh, of today is, is the current plan of record. Um, so yeah, so so that's that's over the overall plan. Um, next one on uh, realistic Alucard ask we have realistic milestones. We should already have a functional marketplace with AI that generates token demand by now. Um, so we do provide, I think we do have realistic updates and milestones and we provide, we've, we've published a roadmap, we provide monthly updates, we provide um, a, a lot of both operational and spin-off and ecosystem updates to the entire community. Plus we have, uh, you know, we, we put them on blogs and then we do our pod leaders meeting, our recorded pod leaders meeting, which provides updates on all of our projects as we go. But what you will uh, notice and what you'll see is the deep funding pro pro also uh, for the AI marketplace. The deep funding program has kickstarted 12 projects in its first funding round uh, with the second round planned to go live in the fourth quarter of 2022. So a huge amount of, of work. Um, you know, wh wh whether we should have a functional marketplace by now with AI generating token demand um, is something that we can debate. But what I can really tell you is that uh, there, there uh, is a huge amount of work underway to increase that traction. And uh, it, as, as I said, 20 new services coming onto the platform uh, just from SingularityNet uh, over the coming few months, never mind all the additional sources and deep funding as well. Um, yeah, I would right. say there's there's been a lot of uh, 
lesson learned since 2017, both in terms of the technical difficulties of building platforms, networks, and systems that really work on, on, on blockchain te technology, which is in a quite primitive form and which has led us to the, the pending Cardano port and, the, and then to, to Hypercycle. And there's also been a lot of lessons learned in terms of, you know, how to reach out to the market of AI developers and users, given that big tech has such a huge development budget and is rolling out so much cool stuff and, and subsidizing it, 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 its usage, right? Because they can they can provide AI models and notebooks and services for free, su subsidizing that usage with, with all the money they make from adver advertising it and such. So we, I think we've learned a lot about difficulties of building stuff on the Ethereum in particular, and and also difficulties of competing with with big companies that are operating AI infrastructures as, as, as loss leaders to gain, to gain domination. And I think we have built a lot of awesome software in spite of these obstacles. And we have come upon a strategy that I think can work really well in terms of getting traction by launching vertical market specific products via our spinoffs, which are in niches where big tech is not is not providing viable competition, right? So, uh, and I, I, but I think it's uh, you know it's required a few pivots and a lot of a lot of hard thinking. I mean, ta taking over the global AI infrastructure is a is a challenging thing to do. So I, I think. Between the vertical market penetration we're going to get with the spinoff products and the move to Cardano and then Hypercycle for increased scalability and, and, and lower costs. I mean, I think we, we are going to be able to realize the visions laid out in 2017 when we started Singularity Net, which is is amazing. Do I wish it had happened faster? I, I, I certainly fucking do, right? But I, I mean, I mean, we're living, we're living. We're living in, in in the real world, and a lot of crazy things have happened along the way to realizing your 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 grand vision. And I am, you know, I'm grateful for the amazing team we have in the foundation, and for for those elements of the community who have stuck with us through the ups and downs of of this this pursuit. And I think the next couple of years are going to be incredible. I do too. <laughs> Absolutely. No question about that whatsoever. And um, thank you very much for that, Ben. Uh, let me see where were we on our platform traction. Um, how does, Dr. Emmerich asked, how does SNET spend all these millions per year with so little in the way of ta tangible results? Um, well, we had, considering the last few years, we've built the marketplace, decentralized AI ecosystem. We've uh, launched two spin-offs. We have another two in very advanced stages and, and another four spin-offs ready to go out this year. We've delivered some fantastic AI in our Grace Dialogue system, our Grace Dialogue, uh, our Singularity Net Dialogue system, numbers of AI um, models that we can use across all of our uh, different services. Uh, we've, we've, we've progressed with building a functional programming language for AGI, and uh, created Hyperon, which is our new version of the OpenCog platform. And um, so, so uh, you, you know, we, we were very, I think we're a very cost-friendly AI team. We've spoken previously about uh, some of the benchmarking salaries, certainly uh, benchmark some of our, some of our AI team, our 50 or so AI, we, uh, in fact, 50 AI developers that we have at Singularity Net um, would cost, you know, three or four times as much as at Quantum Black. Uh, I hope they're not listening now, but yeah, I think we're, we're, we've, we have delivered a, a, a huge amount of value for. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I think for folks who haven't been involved with, advanced technology projects, you know, the amounts of money that it takes to do things in this domain can seem ridiculous. Like, I mean, I remember like when I was in college in the eighties, you know, I was thinking if someone just gave me a million dollars, I could, I could build an AGI quickly if I had such an astounding amount of amount, amount of money. Right. Cause I, I mean, I, I didn't have like, Two hundred dollars to pay the rent in the apartment I was sharing. So, I, 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 on the other hand, if you look at the amount of money spent by 
you know, Silicon Valley venture capital funded companies to build, say, an iPhone app doing something relatively simple. Like you see tens of millions of dollars of funding going into a company, building a relatively simple app that doesn't really have any key features different than other apps that are out there, but like a, a different interface and reaching out to a slightly different different community or, or, or something, right? And I mean, you you look at the cost of paying AI developers in, in US tech hubs. I mean, if you're, a company is paying 300K a year to a single a, a, AI developer, then with tax overhead, blah, 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 companies paying five, 600K a year for, for a, a, a single developer, you're not getting a lot of developer years for a few tens of millions of, 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 of dollars, actually, right? So, I mean, actually, compared to the amount of money that a big tech company spends, or that uh, like Silicon Valley venture funded startup spends to build something, we've built a fuck of a lot of stuff with a limited amount of, of money that we have. And I think, I think that should be apparent to anyone who's like led or funded projects in the modern tech industry. But I can, I can understand why it wouldn't be apparent to everyone from, from every walk of life. And I mean, the fact that it takes crazy amounts of money to build super advanced technology is a problem, right? I mean, this is one of the reasons that AI needs needs democratization. And I, I, I mean, we see that ourselves now, like to be honest, we're constrained by like the amount of money it would take to run server farm to do all the AI AI we want to do. We constantly have prioritization decisions of we would like to be training these neural nets and these open cog models on hundreds of different data sets. We can only do it on 10 at a time because it just we have our own server farm, but it only has X hundred number of processors and you know, time on other servers is is is, is expensive, right? So, I, I mean, this this stuff is just more expensive than than people would think on 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 the face of it. And you can do some reading online to to substantiate that. And as 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 Janet has said, I mean, if 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 you compare it to what the conventional business world costs to do any of the multiple things that we've done, they would have spent more, more money than, 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 we, than we've spent altogether. So, I mean, I think in terms of traction, totally, I wish we had gotten more traction than, than, we, than we have by now. Our initial plan was to have a lot more utilization than we do now. I think I initially thought Ethereum would get itself into shape a lot quicker than it would now. I thought Cardano would launch a mature network faster than it would now. So, in, in a way, we've been delayed in building really scalable practical systems, along with a lot of the infrastructure that we're rely, relying on being delayed. So that, that 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 that's all kind of fair. But in terms of efficient use of monetary resources to to build stuff i think i think we've actually done done tremendously well and i think yeah. janet i'm i'm habitually late for everything and i was late to this but i i think i've got to go record a podcast with with, with someone now so what was was there anything else that critical needed a a, a, ben, a ben response in this ama no, I think you've you've no yeah uh, you you've covered your great passions AGI and and uh, the marketplace and progressive. Well, I've, I've, avo I've avoided talking about how we're actually proceeding and building AGI because that would take up a whole a whole other other hour. But I think we are we are doing it right. I mean, with Open yeah. Cloud Hyperom, we're building our own AGI algorithms. With Grace and the other applications, we're building engines for narrow AI and then AGI to interact with the world and ingest data and, and, and learn. And with Singularity Net Platform moving into hypercycle especially, I mean, we're building something that can be a large-scale, low-cost engine to serve as a decentralized infrastructure for, for AGI. So we are, we, we are progressing toward decentralized AGI in, I think, a quite successful and exciting way. We don't have AGI yet. No, no, nobody, else, nobody else does either. But we are we are definitely proceeding along that path. And at a certain point, 
massive traction on the platform will be incredibly valuable for the quest to AGI because it will pull more and more people into teaching the AGI and learning along with learning along with with the AGI. But I think to this point, even without that, we've been progressing pretty interestingly toward building decentralized artificial general in, in intelligence, which is is why I got into all this shit in the first place. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'll, I'll jump to the podcast recording I have to do. And Janet, you may have a few more minutes if there's more nitty gritty financial yeah, questions. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll right. counter to th them. Th th thanks a Good lot. Good luck with the uh, podcast. Yeah, much, much, much love to all. Right. Right. Uh, so back to me. Where was I? I was on platform traction. Um, uh, yes. Uh, so back to if we don't want 180 and start building utility and proper revenue channels that can justify any holding any of these um any of these tokens, then I don't see how this project will survive. Uh, and he, he, some, some of these are different ways of asking the same question that I've covered already. So, so I'll, I'll do them quite quickly because I don't want to, um, I don't want anyone to feel their question was missed. Um, but we've already said utility and proper underway are, are, are uh, utility and proper revenue are already underway by the high potential spin offs such as Singularity DAO. Uh, new net in DeFi, new net and distributed computing, rejuvenate personal healthcare, and clinical trials, as well as Jam Galaxy and Mindquex on a roll to revolutionize the music and media in industries. And then in the meantime, obviously, constant development of hypercycle layer two sidechain and open cop hyperon will bring together a collection of ai paradigms together so um you know we, we we have an absolutely if you look at the computing the enabling computing layer that we're building with open cog hyperon with ai dsl with uh the decentralized ai marketplace with the sidechain um hypercycle other work we're doing with Cogito, our our stable coin, our tracer coin, not a stable coin, and uh, Singularity DAO, and then the other vertical markets that that we're we're spanning, we're we're really setting ourselves up with media, gaming, uh, decentralized finance, distributed computing, all as major util utilization of the platform, but also industries that really lend themselves very well to artificial intelligence. Um, in terms of proper revenue channels, I think someone else has asked this uh, later down. Um, and if you look at the phase two paper, it, it it, it was never the plan to develop a product that we would be selling for fiat um, at this time, if that's what you mean by proper revenue channels. But what I would say is that we do have four or five very promising late stage partnerships, which do actually bring in uh, revenue, utilizing the AI, which we have, uh, fiat revenue, classic, classic uh, fiat revenue, utilizing the AI, which we've developed for um, twin token for the uh, Grace dialogue system and the Singularity Net dialogue system. So uh, we we have we have a lot of of opportunities for income and revenue across utilization of the token as well as some fiat uh, revenues. And um, uh, we're 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 you know we're certainly going to survive. Um, I would I would. Uh, tell my my mum who's watching and my aunties and all my family who are all AGI token holders. Uh, we're we're probably the most exciting and, and probably the strongest project on the planet today. And I know this because I've met a lot of them at crypto conferences, let's say NFT NYC recently. I met uh, tons and tons of crypto projects and there's none of them can can even come close to comparing to to our technical strength and our uh, visionary strategy. Um, so uh, my current take is ambitions were way too big. Well, we always have big ambitions and anyone who 
uh, has been following Ben or Singularity Net, like we're we're setting out to reinvent existence and build the most powerful technologies. So so yes, the project. I don't believe the project has scattered. So so I'll finish the question. Ambitions are way too big, and the project has scattered into too many directions rather than building a core foundation that has commercial viability. And now we're in a tricky situation and um, I don't have the name of who put this in but nice to say uh, I love the vision but I just can't see uh, how a token holder will profit in this setup so so ambitions were definitely very very big we definitely do have um you know we we do have a we do have a range of uh, a range of avenues by which we're bringing our vision to uh to the world but if if you step back and look at how we're building core technology capability and then seeding it through strategically selected vertical markets, it actually all makes sense. It all ties up together and uh, we'll do a better job of communicating this. We're working on a new website and we're looking at how do we actually communicate um, the, the, the way it the way it all comes together. So I wouldn't say I wouldn't say uh, our ambitions were too big, and I certainly wouldn't say we've scattered into too many directions. Uh, imagine when all of these directions are all coming together on the platform at the same time, along with our AGI um, development. Just you know, the the the, the potential is is completely explosive. Right, next one. What I need to rebuild trust. This is a very long one. I need, what is our plan to generate revenue in the short term? Well, we've talked about this. Uh, we do have a number of partnerships uh, underway. We have uh, one commercial partnership recently signed that we've just, just announced to do non-player characters uh, for the Mandala Enlightenment metaverse and and uh, an, a number of, um, a, a number signed and about to be published and promoted um we're financing the next 20, 12 to 24 months of operational expenses as outlined in the phase two plan through our treasury initiatives through releasing agi x ada tokens through the input through the uh, financial support that we've already outlined that comes from the spin-offs paying for services contributing tokens and through a, a number of different partnerships and projects that we're working on uh, what's the plan to kickstart demand for tokens i've covered that already in in utilization of the platform across deep funding across partnerships across uh, spin-offs and across ai seeded um a agents that we're building clarity on the LDA deal. Okay, Singularity Net and Singularity DAO entered a contractual commitment with LDA Capital signed on 16th of May 2022, under the terms of which LDA granted to Singularity Net and SingDAO to accept a $25 million put option over a period of three years based on terms and conditions agreed at the time. Under this agreement, LDA granted to SNET and SingDAO the right to issue capital call notices requiring LDA to publish to purchase a number of tokens having a total purchase price not exceeding the total commitment of $25 million over a period of 36 months. Under this agreement, Singularity Net or SingDAO may issue a capital call at any time during the commitment period. The purchase price is generally calculated at a modest discount to the recent volume weighted average price. Under this agreement, Singularity Net also provided LDA Capital with an option to purchase 25 million AGIX to tokens at a range of strike prices over three years. And SingDAO also provided them with uh, some options, 1.75 million SingDAO to tokens at a range of out of the money strike prices over three years. This LDA facility is a facility that allows SNET to access liquidity in a flexible manner, underpinning S Singularity Net's ability to get financing regardless of market conditions. Uh, we, Singularity Net does not have any commitment to sell tokens at a specific time or a specific price, but rather the option to do so if conditions are believed appropriate. So there you go. That's uh, what you've all been asking for on the LDA Capital. And we'll also publish this after this meeting in a blog or in a post uh, to you on Singularity on, on the Telegram channel. And so how far have I got? Um, right, I'm on row 39 of 70. I probably need to speed up. 
what the hell is happening with Cardano? Well, that's a question for Cardano. And, and uh, um, you know, there are, are, are very close and very amazing partnerships. And we are delighted to be working with them um, on our platform port, which, um, you know, uh, is is proceeding. Uh, realistic milestones we've already talked about. How are early investors going to be rewarded? Early investors, we do have, we've nearly finished building the loyalty airdrop mechanism um, on the platform. So uh, early investors will be re rewarded uh, shortly with the loyalty airdrop as per phase two plans. Right, next, uh, AGIX utility does not exist yet. They, we've already covered this, we've talked about it. If Ethereum are, if Singularity Net is aware of the uh, shortcomings of Ethereum, why have these API forecasts even being made? Uh, ben touched on this earlier as he, he talked about uh, the shortcomings of, of Ethereum and, and uh, the expectations that we had in the earlier days. I've got Singularity DAO's forecast to achieve approximately 7, 75 million API calls on the Singularity Net platform by the end of 2022. This is Six Sigma. Uh, always great questions from Six Sigma. Thank you. Um, Sing DAO is not even utilizing the SNM platform to any meaningful degree. Why is the C is the Sing DAO AGIX token, token utilization completely off the mark with zero API calls at this at this point? And what is the utility expectation and timeline uh, going forward? So, uh, response there to you: the integration with Cardano has been delayed due to much needed careful development of Converter Bridge, which has now been uh, achieved successfully. At this point, Singularity DAO and Singularity Net are having conversations about this, and Singularity DAO is currently leveraging Singularity Net's AI researchers to figure out AI tools and uh, work with them on the Dyna sets. And as Ben touched upon earlier, we've had some very exciting recent, uh, some exciting recent results from our Transform Neural Nets. Um, at the current time, Singularity DAO is not an AI module on the marketplace, but plans are that it will be in the future as quantitative human assisted training will be slowly but surely uh, supplemented and um, you know one day potentially replaced by machine learning algorithms all right so i'm now on to business model and revenue what's our plan oh i've already you know i've already covered these ones hmm. Right, I don't think I've repeated myself though. So we've covered plan to generate revenue. Um, uh, why should I continue to hold my any tokens? I know to be constant selling pressure from the foundation and all spin-off projects in coming months years. Well, this was the pre the the premise was to to mint a billion new a, a billion tokens, um, and we are. Um, very confident that we are providing really great uh, value for money for money for the tokens that we're minting at Singularity Net, and I've already covered some of our other uh, our, our utilization and our other revenue generating opportunities. Uh, Crypto AI News says no core products. They're they're just sending the AGIX SDAO NTX tokens in order to cover expenses. Uh, ben has touched upon this. We have developed several core core products and we are in very advanced stages with a further 20 AI services to build on the Singularity Net platform and with our spin-offs and each of our spin-offs are across a number of strategically selected vertical markets. We've got the uh, Grace Dialogue System, which is a highly advanced dialogue system. We've got um, we've got uh, and a number of of actual products which which have been developed and which can be used uh, transforming neural nets, for example, for generating lyrics. So core product uh, will be AGI, and we're making huge progress towards AGI and OpenCog Hyperon, and um, and also building out the marketplace and seeding utilization across these vertical markets. So it's going to be, as Ben said, a really amazing couple of years as these are all coming to fruition. Uh, financial outlook is missing from report says burnt toast. Um, it is covered in the, it is covered in the MDMA uh, to, to, you know, at a reasonably high level. So please have a look at the, the covering blog. Um, we consider it's been covered. How long can Singularity Net continue its current operations in case of a prolonged bear market and potential recession? How long could the remaining fear balances support the current staff without external and any revenues that are anticipated but have not yet? So we've touched on, on revenues a number of times. I won't go back to that. 
Um, I guess it depends what you mean by a prolonged bear market. It depends what you mean by, you know, what kind of token prices. What I would say is that our leadership team are, um, we we have got some some excellent price projections. We have excellent operational cost management, and we are very considerate about all of our spending and all of our costs in this current market. Um, so, so it's something which is under very active management and active consideration by the leadership team and, and, and managing it uh, closely um, at this point in time. Right, we're into trading and treasury questions now. Detailing of all OTCs and token sales, including the spin-offs, are very much needed uh, as it might shed some light, what we've already talked about, level of, of transparency. And TBQH, uh, at this point in time, I think a lot of us will be relieved if a large por portion of the atrocious price actions of SNAP ecosystem tokens has been due to team dumping because the alternative explanations are even worse. Certainly, if 10 million were raised through SDAO and NTX, there presumably been a huge amount of token sales. Um, so I won't go into speculation, but I will say that we raised 10 million in private rounds and we can't share details of private transactions or market sensitive data uh, such as that to, uh, you know, so that we're, we're not construed as manipulating the market. Carrot and the LDA deal, uh, I have just provided um, and what I would also add is we do not control the behavior of any private token holders, but we do actively monitor major holders' behaviors to avoid excessive market imbalances. So that answers your question. Alucard saying um, clarity on the LDA team and why they keep dump dumping tokens, if indeed that is the case. Singularity Net ends the year at 14. Uh, this is from L. Camerings. First question for you. Ends the year at 14,453,580. Does this go into Dynaset someday? Singularity Net has been supporting its ecosystem projects since the beginning and we continue to do so. We prioritize the health and resilience of the foundation, but any extra resources can be support, employed in support of ecosystem products. And we talked, we, we covered uh, what is Singularity Labs? It's just the name of, of one of the subcontractors to one of our teams. Um, uh, it's not, and it is different to Studio. Uh, when is the next deep funding round? How to, this is from, this came in on the AMA form. Thanks for the question. When's the next deep funding round? How to start a new ecosystem project company with SNET? Uh, the likes of SDAO, Unit, Cogito, to name a few. Is there any plan to categorize the services on the AI marketplace? For example, A to A, AI services helping other AI services, A to B, AI services that integrate to business, and A to C, AI services directly to users and consumers. We are aiming for a next deep funding round in quarter three, but we've not yet committed to the date. We'll have some discussions with the community on the best date and other conditions. And you're welcome to join these discussions. Please join our Discord deep funding channel and uh, or the bi-weekly Zoom call that we hold on deep funding. Uh, regarding categories, if that's a great idea. Uh, yes, I think we we probably will. Um, thank you for, for suggesting that. We do hope that our, our AI DSL, which is our domain specific language, will make a static orientation less important and have a more intelligent approach that will allow for uh, mixing and matching of services based on input output and um, perhaps be more more bespoke and personalized than categorized but clearly a categorization is a good suggestion we'll take that on board thank you um so there were a there were a number of questions from crypto ai news and um just very briefly i think what i would say was uh there was some common saying it's not a balance sheet just words thrown on on a, a on a page, uh, but we think it's likely that perhaps um, Crypto AI News didn't click on the financial report link uh, because there, there, there are a lot more details than were called out in some of the questions. And also question the statement, um, some of the numbers net income rebounded, uh, how did this work, there's net income, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so all of the questions there, I think, are all answered in the notes in the in the 
uh, in the financial report. So, for example, he says net income shown on the sheet of figures for 2020 is negative $199,000 loss. So what is the $529,000 net income? Which one is wrong? What's wrong? What's right? Uh, so what our uh, response financial from the financial uh, from Mario is unrealized gain loss goes in other comprehensive income, which is not part of net income as per international accounting standards. And uh, again, some of the questions there. So, so we're suggesting please read the uh, please read the detailed report and understand that net income versus other comprehensive income as unrealized gains loss on crypto is not part of the um, net income. Uh, fabulous question in from Burton Toast today. As a company based in Amsterdam, the second largest food exporter in the world, what is Singularity Net doing to support farmers with innovative technologies to further reduce nitrogen and ammonia emissions and to help incentivize both farmers and the government to move to AI-based emissions detection and efficiency methods. Maybe an AI hackathon like we did during COVID. So um, really, really great question. We do have a super exciting smart farming um, initiative partnership in in un, under discussion, uh, not in Amsterdam though, uh, but we'd love to come and actually speak with you about uh, what we could possibly do together as a partnership. We have already voted to fund a project based on net zero and carbon negative emissions, and uh, that's in our deep funding entries. We can set, share those afterwards. Um, and efforts to reduce nitrogen and ammonia emissions Perhaps you'd like to propose something in deep funding yourself, and we'd be delighted to speak with you about that. In agriculture generally, Sridhar, our chief blockchain officer, he's from an agriculture background in India, and he mentors four uh, startups in the agriculture space. And Matty Clay um, has a great passion for all things sustainability and environmental and has got a partnership. He leads the partnership with Arizona State University, where we're looking at advanced methods of carbon sequestration. And um, and it's something that, that yeah, like I said, uh, I'm from my mom's from from a farming background in in Ireland and um, my friend, I have a degree in geology as well. So I'm very interested in all things environmental and sustainable as well. And there we go. That is the end of the submitted questions. I hope we've provided you with the confidence and the transparency and the, you know, we're, we're as absolutely transparent as, as we can be. We're definitely not perfect. Are we amazing? I think so. And the talent of the team that I work with here at Singularity Net is, is outstanding and unparalleled um, from anywhere I've worked before in my career. I think we have a hugely, incredibly positive future. Our roadmap is chock block full of deliverables across both core technology, AI, AGI, um, we're going to have our meta programming language out for beta testing shortly. We've got, uh, like I said earlier, the Mindflex magazine is coming out, Reduve apps going, going uh, well. We've launched our the world's first humanoid fronted band in LA and, and New York in, in the last couple of months. And th that band's going to have its first single out very shortly. We actually just got permission from... Uh, from the estate of a uh, very famous singer to to release our first single. And that, of course, um, supports our Jam Galaxy initiative, which we're seeing huge demand for from the artists and musicians uh, space with some, some really giant names, names uh, signed up for that. So I probably missed lots of other exciting stuff because we are the company that has got the most exciting things going on ever. We're completely completely dedicated we're completely committed we're progressively decentralizing we love you all as ben said in his closing uh, you know uh, we can't do it without you so keep talking to us we'll keep talking to you please come see us anywhere you find us around the world at open events and yeah we'll keep the keep the conversation open if I've missed anything on the uh, questions on the YouTube questions, we'll pick them up later in Telegram because I think we're probably massively overrun at this point. And thank you everyone for your lovely comments on YouTube. And thank you also 
the way you all make me feel so welcome on uh, on Telegram and in the community. It's a honor and a privilege. 